shall we look to the Lord in prayer. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Rock and the Redeemer. The topic for this evening, as given in the lectionary, is People of God, Salt and Light. For this evening, the lectionary has prescribed two readings. That's one from the Old Testament, which we heard and which, which I would like to refresh. The salt. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave salt of the covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to all your offerings. The second reading is from Romans 13 and 12. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We will now see the salt and light in separate portions in two parts. The key verse for us is from the Sermon on the Mount as found in Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Again, I would like to refresh our memories with these verses. 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty? Again, it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and trampled underfoot. Verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In this morning service, Pastor Ed illustrated and focused on examples from real life situations in the life of ordinary people as we would ordinarily read in the newspaper or magazines or even we could have witnessed it in our lives. How they sacrifice their lives and their time in the service of others and their welfare the society at large. To bring the satanic rule to an end and to bring in the kingdom of God to us. That was his message. And they were the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In this message now, I would like to just focus on the basics. What Jesus would have had in mind when he uttered these words as on the Sermon on the Mount. What would have been on his mind? At this point, I think we should bear in mind that during the time of Jesus, there was no electricity, basically. So what the people of that time would have thought about this, these words would definitely be different from what we would understand by these words now. So let us try to analyze how Jesus tries to compare us to the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt and light as we experience in our lives today, we take it so much for granted that as we open our eyes in the morning, we love to see daylight and we sit on the dining table. We also taste our food and see that salt, there is enough salt to make it tasty. We uh, take it for granted. It have been, have been the same in the early times, 2000 years also. But one, the only difference was there was no electricity. So people would have depended only on the natural light from dawn to dusk. And it, light was very valuable. In the same way, salt also, in those days, 
was not as easily available as it is now you as you go to the grocery stores or the supermarket and you get a packet of salt granular salt the salt in those days was rock salt and not the salt which we have nowadays so it was quite different in those days also so let us see and delve into the history of salt the value of salt and the qualities of salt to see how jesus compares it to us and how we should our lives as the salt and the light of the earth <coughs> salt they say in those days from the beginning of civilization until until about 100 years salt was one of the most sought after commodities in human history the ancient civilization with the spread of civilization salt also became one of the world's main trading commodities it was of high value to the ancient hebrews the greeks the romans and also in the middle east so much so that there is a saying that that nothing is more useful than sun and salt as the romans used to say and also it is said but not confirmed that during the roman rule during the time of jesus the soldiers were paid salt as salary it was so much valuable maybe even the value of gold was comparable to the salt in those days because it was not freely available in those days let us now see how the bible tells us about salt light as we know was available to us from creation but salt how does it come into our lives when did it come into our lives if you refer to the bible in the book of job probably the book of job is the first book of the bible which was written and in the book of job in job 6 and 6 we see the mention of salt as a condiment it says can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt or is there any taste in the white of an egg in the hebrew bible that are 35 verses which mention salt one of these mentions lot's life who was turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back at the cities of sodom and gomorrah as found in genesis 19:26 and in judges 9 and 45 we said that the judge abimelech destroyed the city of shechem and he said to have sown salt on it probably as a curse on anyone who would re-inhabit it in the new testament six verses mention salt in the sermon of the mount as we have seen salt of the earth and the apostle paul in colossians 4:6 also encouraged christians to let your conversation be always full of grace and seasoned with salt as we see here salt was valuable even during the times of the bible and as we have already seen in the lesson read to us uh, in leviticus 2 we see there was a salt covenant what is a salt covenant let us see the old testament law commands the use of salt in all grain offerings and makes clear that the salt of the covenant should not be missing from the grain offerings that is found in leviticus 2:13 since the levitical priests did not have land of their own God promised to provide for them via the sacrifices of the people and he called this promise of provision a salt covenant 
This is also found in Numbers 18 and verse 19. Salt has always been known for its preservative properties and it is also possible that God instructed the use of salt so that the meat would last longer and taste better and thus be of more value to the priests who depended upon it for their daily food. Even today's world we see this, we see dried salt fish, we see uh, salted meat, dried meat, especially in the rural areas. This practice is even prevalent now. Probably what Jesus would have meant was we should retain the saltiness in ourselves so that just as salt has preserved the meat and other things in those days, we should also maintain our saltiness so that we preserve the society, the people around us through our good deeds, our good works. And if we roast our saltiness, we become meaningless in society, in this society which is filled with evil and violence. So salt was important in those days. How does it come into our lives today? The world needs us. As the salt of the earth, we are both valuable and useful to God and to God's world. Salt in itself does not make our food. One of the properties of salt is to make our food tasty. We add it to our food and season it. It becomes tasty to eat. So salt in itself is not the food. It is added to the food to make it tasty. Salt is always used for something else. It is simply there to help flavor the meal. And that is true for us Christians too. We are living for Jesus and not for ourselves. We are the salt and Jesus is the food. The church is only really doing what it is due to, created to do when it is doing it to others. And it is true of all Jesus' disciples, that is us. We are important to the kingdom when we exist more when we exist for more than ourselves. Only when we exist for Jesus and only when we, we are willing to be the sword and not the main course. We are always useful to society. Here we can remember our forefathers, the early missionaries who came down to India, who were the salt and the light of the earth, especially we can remember Ziegenbaugh, Caldwell, G.U. Pope, Veerama Muniva, foreigners who came to our country sacrificed their lives and their time to be the salt and the light of the people here in India. And we can also remember at this time Sadhu Sundar Singh and our other missionaries even now who are serving in the difficult parts of this country for being the salt of this earth and also the light of the world and they are creating a, a situation to bring us into bring people into the kingdom of God by sacrificing their lives and another interesting example which in the Bible which we can see is the life of John the Baptist he was sent before Jesus he existed to pe prepare the way for Jesus. And once Jesus came into the scene, John knew that the ministry was complete. And in the Gospel, according to John, in chapter 3, he says, 
he must increase and i must decrease and it is true for us to jesus must always increase in our lives we must always decrease we are the salt not the food jesus is the food but when we devote our lives to jesus and to the world then we are truly being the salt of the earth coming to the second part that is the right of the world in the gospel of st john jesus says that he himself is the light of the world but here in the sermon on the mount jesus tells us that we are the light of the world how do we connect these two utterances what can we understand from these words that he has given us we can understand it it in a way like we are reflecting the light that we receive from jesus like the sun receives it sends it to the moon the moon receives the light of the sun and it brightens the darkness of the night to us we would have experienced this in our lives too on a dark night the bright light of the moon always brightens the whole earth in the same way we do we are reflecting the light of the sun but when we are doing that well when we are being fully ourselves the disciples of jesus that god has called us to be it is amazing how much light we can offer to the world and to the and the darker the world around us the more important the light the light of the son of god let us see some references which again the lectionary has given for today's meditation isaiah 49 6 says i will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth Psalm 27 one says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear in this jesus is here portrayed as a liberator the light sent to us to liber- liberate us from the darkness of sin with his salvation the liberator that is in christ in ephesians 5 eight he says it says for at one time you were darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of the light for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true here jesus is portrayed as the leader he is that light that leads us from darkness of sin into the brightness of his salvation and as found in the sermon on the mount matthew 5 he is the light who illuminates us with his brightness that we may reflect his light to the world and to serve the world an interesting reference by paul in all his epistles i would like to say that <clears throat> paul makes a reference in the roman uh, empire there was a practice when a child moves from a uh, grows up from his adulthood to his i'm mean, sorry in his childhood to his adulthood there is a change in the robes they wear it was during those that time the child, robe which a child used to wear is 
as he becomes an adult, it is changed to a flowing robe, a seamless robe from top to of his head to the tip of his toe, a flowing robe, which is called the toga. He makes a reference in there as we pass from a darkness what's in, into the light, the robe which an adult wears, his righteousness and holiness, that he can reflect that light to the world which we have got and we, which we have obtained from Jesus, the light. This is referred to by uh, Paul in all his, in most of his epistles, we can see this reference. Our world certainly needs a little light these days and Jesus tells us that being a disciple means providing this light. Now there may arise a question, who is a disciple? Are we spectators or disciples? How do we become a disciple? We will live a life for Jesus. We obey all his commands and statutes. And we submit our life right to Jesus. We become a, his disciple. We can reflect his life into the darkness of this world. It is not our light, but the light which you obtain from His, His light reflected through us, through our words, our deeds, our good works, the life that we live here on this earth. Jesus calls us to let our light shine both in the church and in the community. Just as Pastor was repeating uh, in his sermon this morning, our church also is involved in, in various ministries, the ministry of Pariwali among the handicapped children, a section of the society which is, has been downtrodden. And we have the study center for the children, the neglected society the, on the periphery of the education side of our country. And we also have this uh, ministry at Santoshapuro, where the, most of the members of our women's fellowship meet every month to share their concerns about the families and pray for them, to uplift them and empower them. These are the ministries which our church is involved and in the community around us, serving as a witness to the life that we live in Jesus. In that way, each of us has a little light to share with our world. You might not think that you have much to offer. You may not have much time, you say. I don't have much talent also, you say. That you don't have much to offer. But the Bible tells us that every one of us has exactly enough to let our shine, let shine in this world. God has given to us exactly what God needs for us. Every light matters, every person counts, and even the smallest light is welcome sight in a dark place. We all agree there is darkness in the world today. We live in a broken and sinful world. It, is, it can be a fearful place, a discouraged place, an angry, frustrated place. But the amazing thing about light is that the darker a place is, the less light is needed. The smallest flashlight or candle can light up a dark room. Imagine a dark room where there is no light at all, where is there no electricity. We light a small candle in a corner of the room. It provides a light in that area. Maybe a slightly bigger candle in another corner of the room. It provides more light in that area. And another corner, maybe an even bigger 
can be. It provides more life. Each one in society, as us in this church, we can provide light similarly according to our capacity and what has God has placed in us. We need to live for others in this society to be useful disciples of Christ. We can all bring glory to God simply by letting our light shine. We don't have to change the world to give glory to God. We don't have to fix all the problems of our world. We just need to let our light shine and that will bring glory to God. The great preacher Charles Persian put it like this. The Bible is not the light of the world. It is the light of the church. But the world does not read the Bible. The world reads Christians. You are the light of the world. So we must be the light of the world. And Jesus tells us that we are. Again, in Matthew 5.14, we should, it says, Can you find a city that is sitting on top of a hill? Its light at night can be seen for miles. If we live for Jesus, we will glow like lights, shining brightly with His love. Many who are living in spiritual darkness will be attracted by our light and want to step into it. Jesus' light always reveals the truth. And how do we hide our light if we don't be useful for Jesus? We hide our light by being quiet when we should speak out aloud for the others. Going aloud with the crowd along with the world and being one of them. Denying God's truth again. Fourth thing, Letting sin dim our light. It's not explaining our light to others. Or six, ignoring the needs of others. Let us be a beacon of truth. Let us not shut our light off from the rest of the world. In conclusion, let me say that Jesus has said that you are to be the light of the has not said that you are to be the light of the world or you, are, or you are to be the salt of the earth. In fact, he has clearly confirmed that we are the light, salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. All we have to do, in other words, to be the salt and the light to, is to follow Jesus. So let us not lose our saltiness. Let us not hide our lives. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence with us and the four words that you have shared with us. We thank you and praise you. We glorify your holy name. Continue to be with us, Lord, and help us to be the salt of this earth and the light of this world as we leave this church and be useful disciples in the society and witnesses to the society around us. 